Hello folks and welcome back to the Moshix channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking at ways to secure our interactive uh, Linux servers. Um, the reason I decided to make this video is that I myself have a need for this. I have uh, in the cloud um, a, several instances of Linux running where um, some people have a login, um, SSH login to those to those machines and um, um, I've decided to give them a restricted environment so that uh, they have their own view of a machine uh, in the form of a container and without being able to destroy by mistake or intentionally uh, the whole Linux installation on that on that server and so uh, today we're going to be uh, looking how to do this the reason um, other than security is um, as I said, uh, keep a system up, uh, it's, its availability, keeping the system up and running as well. Also a third, uh, third use for restricted login environment could be um, as a honeypot to have hackers log in to a server which they think is the whole server but it's just a container so you can observe what they do. Uh, those are the three uses I can think of. There's probably other uses as well. And so before we get there, I want to prepare an environment. I've been receiving, I would say, dozens of messages and emails from people asking to show how my uh, environment, my lab here at home looks like um, and how I, I work with, uh, with uh, Windows, uh, Linux and all these other operating systems within my home lab. And so um, we're going to use the opportunity of this video to uh, to show a little bit of that. Um, as what you see here on my left side, this is my vCenter uh, environment. Uh, it's, it's of course a VMware software that controls my cluster of machines um, on which ESX is installed and where I run, I would say probably close to 150, 170 virtual machines for all kinds of purposes. Some of which are for the purpose of making YouTube videos for the Moshix channel. Um, so what you see here is I've turned off one, two, three, four um, servers here. Those are Intel NUCs, and this is an Intel NUC as well. Um, it doesn't show it here in the description, but it's a, an Intel NUC with an i7, um, two CPUs and uh, four, um, two cores each. Um, and uh, it's a very fast machine, but has a very strict number of cores. Um, and this is the machine I've been using lately for all my YouTube videos. However, I've recently also acquired a, well, it used to be a giant server. Um, it's an HP ProLine DL580 um, Generation 7. Um, we can go here and see a picture of this uh, uh, HP ProLine DL580 7. That's how this uh, computer looks like. It's quite a big machine. It's also very heavy. I would say it's about 70, 80 pounds, uh, fully configured with all drives, such as my machine here. Um, and um, this machine has 40 CPUs um, at 2.4 gigahertz. It's an E7 4870 processor, I think with 30 megabytes of cache on, this, on the processor. It used to be a very fast processor about, I want to say maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, G7 uh, machines are obviously not uh, very modern anymore, but um, for me this is a perfect machine. It only cost me like $800 on eBay. It has uh, 512 gigabytes of RAM, that's 512 gigabytes, and it has 80 logical processors um, so that I can run lots of virtual machines. This is the, the perfect machine to run virtual machines. It draws fully configured with 512 gigabyte of RAM and all the drive slots allocated with uh, drives it, it 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 draws about 700 um, uh, watts of power uh, which i think is just barely uh, doable um, it, i don't keep it running all the time uh, especially in the summer there's also air conditioning that needs to kick in because this machine does heat up uh, the room quite a bit and so i only run it when i really must um, but if you have uh, hundreds of virtual machines, um, this is the perfect machine. It's very cheap to buy. It's okay on power consumption. Uh, obviously the CPUs are not the fastest, as I said. Uh, if you want anything faster than that, I recommend going with a, 
uh, three or four year old Supermicro with a uh, 2.6 gigahertz processor, but the faster ones, the E5s, especially the version twos and version threes. Uh, the other shortcoming of this server here, the ProLine DL580, which one reason I may not necessarily recommend this machine is that it needs to have HP branded drives and they, HP just rebrands um, Western Digital drives because otherwise the machine will run always at full uh, fan speed which makes this as loud as a Boeing 747 taking off from a nearby um, uh, runway so um, and there's a good reason why um, uh, Morton over at uh, my playhouse on YouTube he prefers the uh, IBM uh, or Lenovo servers especially the, the X um, uh, 3650s and the X 3850s um, X5s, M4s, M3s, those are excellent machines because you can put any kind of drive in them. So having said that, let's go and create a new virtual machine. Um, so this is also a great way to show you how I operate. And then let's get running in creating a, um, a restricted login environment for users, with each with their own non-persistent container. So let's uh, get this machine up and running. Let's see um, what the definition is of this machine. It's okay, so it has eight gigabytes. Let's give it twelve. I have plenty of plenty of uh, of memory in this machine. Four CPUs is fine, um, and um, no need to connect um, the CD drive. So that's um, that's okay. Uh, all right. So let's get this machine started. And let's see what's in this machine. It, this looks to me like it was a clone of a previous machine. Um, okay, this is coming up nicely. Just log in to get the to get the uh, IP number, which I can also get from here. Very soon it will say VMware Tools running, and the IP address will show you pretty soon. Um, okay, so. Yeah, this is IP48. Um, let's renew the lease. Okay, this is 48. So, um, yeah, and now it shows up here as well, as you can see. Um, so you're gonna be using this machine uh, for all our work. Uh, this is the same machine that I have been doing a lot of videos on. Um, so I think this is a perfect environment. So um, let's create here a new, um, okay, this is nothing that concerns us. We can close this. Uh, let's create a new uh, putty uh, session, um, new session and 48. It should automatically set the colors right as well as the appearance. Yes. Okay, so let's go. Never been there before. Uh, yeah, and that is the problem. I uh, with Putty, you cannot fix the original login. Um, okay. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about Putty is that it, it the login is actually fake at the beginning, so you can't really change the first user you put in. Alrighty. So um, first of all, we need to obtain. Um, uh, the Docker container environment, and you can do the install Docker container. Um, install Docker Ubuntu. I work with Ubuntu. Okay, there is a curl that you need to execute. This one. Okay, let's get this done, and then. Uh, Update. Okay. Perfect. And now we put an apt cache policy docker CD. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, this went well. And now we do the install. Okay, this is coming down nicely. Okay, and then systems control status docker. Okay, so, and now we need to add the user. User mod, okay. We add root, so we don't have to do as, um, so it will accept that as, as part of the docker group. And now that's it. Uh, let, let's look. Stats. Okay, there's no container running, but Docker is installed and running. So far, so good. Um, so we can close this now. And I've put in here the sequence of commands uh, that I know work. And so, uh, I, uh, okay, so we can make this a bit smaller here and put it in here so first of all what we're going to create is we're going to create a container image which is the container image that's going to be executed every time a particular user logs in so you could have different container images for each user you can you can uh, you can adapt and modify them according to what you need um, let me make this smaller so it doesn't disturb us okay um, and uh, so we, we just create one now and then I'll show you how to um, personalize the image according to what we need. I'm trying to make the, the, the windows here match perfectly. Okay. All right. So first let's get started with docker run minus it. Um, and we're going to go to the login container container. Uh, let's say programmer Ubuntu bin bash, which means that we created uh, of a container called login container for programmers uh, of type Ubuntu, and then uh, we want to execute the bash shell. Um, so it's it's downloading now an image of Ubuntu as a container image. This takes a few seconds. Okay, so now we've done that and we are now already inside the container. You can see it from, this is the hex um, a name of the container. And so once we're in here, we start to adapt and, and um, customize this container for a programmer. So let's say it's a, it's a, a C and a Go programmer. And uh, so the programmer will also require certain tools. So first we go, we do an app update to update the repository list. So this is now inside the container. Um, and now we're going to do app install certain things I need. Um, uh, GCC, GoLang, Unzip, and IP tools. IP tools may be, yeah, it's probably with a dash. Uh, we'll have to find later what the package is called. Uh, if config in Ubuntu. Uh, it's going to be called Net Tools. Ah, I always get this wrong. Net Tools. Okay, these are the very strict minimum required. Oh, it's still half a gigabyte of stuff. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, while we do this, we can actually, uh, from here, uh, meanwhile, log in to the same uh, machine and watch the container from the outside. Okay, Docker stats. Uh, and you will see that there is login container contain programmer is running and it's using 116 um, 100, uh, 400 kilobytes 
um, of the 12 gigabytes. So that's the great thing about a container. You have a wholly uh, isolated, separate environment, but it's using very minimum resources, only 484 kilobytes. If this was a virtual machine, it would use for sure at least a half a gigabyte or a gigabyte of RAM, easy at least. If it was a more recent version of Ubuntu, like 17, or four or something like that, it would it could go to two gigabytes. So this is about 50 times less resources usage than, and also on the file system and um, on the on the I/O level. Um, so this is one of the great things about about um, about uh, containers. Let's go back here and let's look at the command sequence again. We got our so once we have this. We can start and look around if we have everything you need. Um, so we have an IP address. We can ping Yahoo, but probably ping is not installed. So I need to install apt install um, IP tools ping. Uh, install type on. IP tools. Um, see what yeah. Ubuntu install ping uh, IP utils ping uh, this package is sometimes IP utils ping yeah get this done okay ping yahoo.com yes so we have um, the bare minimum. Do probably need VI. There's no VI app. Install V Vim and Joe maybe. And what else do we need? Um, we may need um, make. Okay. So we now have. A, an image that starts to be something a programmer may use. Uh, Vim works. Okay, may it works. UCC is uh, version 5.40. Um, so we have now a, an image, a container that's usable to a programmer. Once we have, we think we're, uh, let's see if H dot works, that works. Um, maybe um, I have to install SSH. Uh, yes. So that's done. And now we have to enable the service. Service start. Service. Yeah, it's running. Okay, uh, one more thing, we may have to add the user for the programmer, add user prog. Okay, we call it prog1, prog1, programmer user. Okay, let's see if this works, yes. All right, um, this seems to work perfectly. So now that we've got this done, we can exit this uh, container and we commit it now so that it's uh, it, it we, we keep the uh, the settings of this container. So we do this with docker commit minus m uh, programmer container for SSH users login container login prog image. Uh, what is that? Docker commit. Oh, login contain cont pro cont program. Okay, this will take a while. It's now writing what well, we everything we installed is now going to be committed into um, directory on the server. It could also be put into a volume uh, with the Docker volume command. Um, and while we wait, so this is done, and now we can start it. Um, if you look at this now, you see that nothing is running. Okay, there's no container running. Um, and soon we're gonna run it. So for that, I first wanna create screens, a new screen session so we can have several uh, shells running. 
So we do Docker start uh, login count programmer. And we should now already see it. Yes, it's already up and running. One more advantage of containers is it starts and goes down very quickly. And now we get a um, a shell inside there, programmer. Okay, so we're now inside the shell. Uh, if you see here, we have almost nothing running. That's why containers are so lightweight. Um, let's create a new shell on the original server and go check out what's running. And so here, now it's running. It's only using uh, 1.4 megabytes, basically nothing. Um, so now what we got to do is now that we have the image of the container ready, we need to, uh, to make to, to enable the process so that when people SSH to the original server, to this server, not to the container, because they will be uh, SSHing into the container, that a, a new container will be spun off and the user will be granted a login into that server. So how do we do that? Um, let's create a user called test user, user add, and add them to the group Docker so that they can run Docker commands. And um, now we create a test shell or a login shell, which is the login shell that users are going to be uh, running when they log in automatically. User local then prog shell, put it like this. Uh, make it executable. Okay, now we need to add this shell to um, to the um, shells uh, list of shells, authorized shells in Ubuntu. But to do that, we run this command here. Uh, we could just audit, uh, edit it with the link command as well, but which we can actually do. Uh, proc shell uh, shells. That's in now. Uh, let's just make sure that, yeah, proc shell. Okay. Um, so once we got that done, we changed the shell for the user, for the user prog, which we just created, right? Remember we created this prog. Um, oh, actually we need to call it prog. Okay, prog uh, is going to be now ch we're changing the default shell for user prog so that the user, uh, whenever the user logs in, uh, will be uh, invoking this shell here, the prog shell. How do you do that? With change shell command, user local bin prog shell for prog. That's done. Now we should see if you go. Um, look at the user database uh, we'll see that programmer prog is going to be in home prog but the uh, login shell is going to be prog shell um, and now we have to edit the shell so that it will invoke and run a a stateless um, container uh, whenever the user logs in so let's do that um, user local bin prog shell we're gonna say um, Docker run, and this tells it that this is a stateless. So all changes that are gonna be made within um, within that shell, we're gonna are gonna be erased once the user exits, and we can we will we will prove that. So let's see, run Docker run a new image uh, minus minus make it stateless login cont programmer bin bash. This looks good. Um, I think this is really all we need to do. Um, why don't we go over here now and log in as prog. Oh, let's give the password, password, prog, prog1, one, prog1. One. Okay, so SSH over at uh, this server, over at this server over here, and prog1. And exec format error. So there is an error. Hmm. 
Photo with you wrong. Uh, home prog, no such file or directory. Oh, okay. Need to make a directory. A home prog and change on um, prog, prog. Or is it the other way around? Okay, let's try this again. Exit. Um, so, use a local bin proc shell exec format error. So, let's see what's wrong. Um, Docker run. Let's run, try this from the command line. And remember, folks. One of the many reasons I make these videos is so that I make mistakes so you don't have to do repeat the same mistakes. Hmm. More. What is the file call again? More command. Docker run minus it. Oh, of course. Um, only one. Docker error response from daemon pool access denied for logging program because there's no system may require a docker login. Hmm, I've never had this before, so um, why do we do we do the change shell? Login count programmer latest locally. Let's see. Docker stats. Login count programmer. Um, maybe it's because I was logged in. I don't think so, but let's try again. Login count programmer. But it was called Login Cont Programmer. Um, there must be something wrong here with the with the naming. I think it's a naming um, problem. Okay. Docker list. Docker. That's Docker. Exit. Oh, it's login container. Yeah, that is the problem. Uh, a login. No, a login cont programmer in dash. So that works. Doctor uh, stats. Okay. So it looks like we have to exit. Doctor stop. Okay. Let's try this again. I'm able to find login count programmer locally. A response from daemon pool access denied for login response. Possess this or may require docker login. Uh, um, let me research this topic a little bit. I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. Uh, I found the, the, the problem and that is that when we created the image, we had to give it an image name and the image name was login image. And that is the name you want to invoke when you invoke the image, because the image is what the container is based off. So the container is an instance of an image. So that's, of course, we need to, when we instantiate an image, we need to give it the image name. And so, um, and so you go here, uh, prog shell, 
and you can say locker run instantiate make it uh, stateless and then log an image and so now um, we can try this and say uh, prog at this server over here um, passwords prog one and um, this is still not working uh, here it does work um, if I do a prog um, if, if I change the user prog then I will be inside this shell here inside this container uh, so there's one more problem here somewhere um, did we make this okay change mode uh, user local bin prop prop shell Let's try this again oops wrong password no exec format error um, it's something about exec it wants to run execution format error um, Yeah, I guess this is the uh, shell. It probably wants um, uh, something like this. Um, let's see if this fixes it. Yes, so you needed, of course, the shebang at the beginning of the of the show. <laughs> Stupid of me, um, but see now um, this is uh, we're now inside a container, and uh, uh, it says it's a two and arrow, but and so uh, we have the environment we want. The good thing, one fourth uh, advantage of using containers for. Uh, users logging in is that you can make them root um, and so if they need to install something if they need to be root for something they can be here without giving them root to the full machine so that is probably the most important advantage which I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video so uh, if we do now docker stats we shall see um, and uh, docker gives it uh, easy to remember names so you don't have to remember this whole hexadecimal sequence here. So it calls it Serene Noether, Noether. Um, and, uh, and so I can, for instance, uh, create one more login again. And you can see now it, there is a confident noise. And I'll do it right over again. <laughs> And now we have hardcore Montalcini. And, and so as you can see here, the memory footprint is extremely lightweight. So you could have thousands of users logging in, each one being a root, and uh, it's much, much lighter weight than, uh, than a full virtual machine. Now let's test the stateless nature of this uh, login. So let's say uh, I'm gonna go and install, um, I don't know, do we have uh, nmod here? No, okay, so apt install nmod. Let's say this programmer needs nmod for this run. And so now nmod is here and it's running. Okay. Um, so that runs. Now when the user exits, This is a new instance. Of course, nmon is gone. Okay, so these are stateless instances. Um, if the user needs uh, certain things installed in the uh, in the image, you can obviously always start the image and install whatever you need to install as the system administrator, and then run the commit command again. Uh, uh, where was it? The one, one called 
docker commit minus m. It's gonna come up here very soon. No, it's gone. So it will be docker commit minus m. And then um, once you made all the changes and commit it again, and you could also give it a second name um, as an image. And so this way uh, you could make um, your changes to the to the instance that's going to be start started up when the user logs in. So this works um, as we've seen. Um, this is very useful um, to have users each keep their own environment. If we talk about mainframe usage, um, you know, one usage I have for this is I uh, have different versions of Hercules installed in each instance. So if you need to test the version, various versions of Hercules, um, it's a, it's, it makes your environment much safer. It's very lightweight. You hardly feel what's going on in the system. Um, and this is really nothing here. And how many images do we have right now? Okay, so we have three, um, and and the system is hardly breaking a sweat. Um, so this is uh, how to work with uh, containers for a useful purpose. Very easy to follow. Um, I'll put in the command sequence uh, in the description below this video if you're interested in replicating. And um, and for any questions, of course, you can always post questions below the video in the comments. Send me an email um, or a direct message. And uh, please do uh, subscribe to my channel to get notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, please, please press on the thumbs up button and see you soon again on my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.